Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Glynis Trail Nash for Rescue TV here with Kirsty Clements to talk about your new book, The Vogue Factor. Welcome, Kirsty. Hi, Glynis. How's it all going? Really good. I'm running on adrenaline a bit. Yeah, good. Because the launch was last Thursday. How was that? That was a fantastic launch. Yeah. There were so many supporters there, yeah. and I just loved it. Deborah Thomas, who from, features prominently. Prominently, in the book. she's a great friend of mine. She did the most brilliant speech. Excellent. There was there was a lot of girl power in the room. Excellent, we yeah. love that. Yeah. And um and how's the reception been so far to the book itself? Yeah, well, I'm just starting to get the Twitter followers, which is fantastic. And great. it's just been. I know that there's a lot of young women that follow me on Twitter, and so I'm getting getting a lot of feedback from them. And right. I think because I hoped that the book, well, I wrote the book, um, to be motivational. It wasn't necessarily to tear people apart or to shred yeah. anybody or you know the the, the big expose yeah. it, it's honest but it's yeah. hopefully motivational as well yeah because I mean, that was obviously the thing that struck me most reading the book was that it, it's not an expose it's not a bloodletting which a lot no. of people probably would have expected but, but it is yeah. it is aspirational especially for young people wanting to get into the industry and see how it's changing as well yes. i guess yeah because what it turned out to be, I mean, I loved my time in Vogue. I was there for 25 years, and it was really great right up until <laughs> the last the last five minutes, you know. Yeah. So there wasn't any real reason to to be a bloodletting exercise because yeah. what I really, when I looked back at it, it was full of great mentors and you know really wonderful experiences. Yeah. But also, as I wrote it, I realised it was a slice of history of social history, I guess, not to be too ponderous, but it's fashion publishing of 25 years and what it was in 1985 is not what it is today yeah. and you know, you, you've been in the industry yeah. a long time, you know how swiftly it's changing. It's a different beast. Yeah. It's a very different beast. Very. So obviously last May, mm -hmm. you did have a, a phenomenal last day if we can put it in those yeah, terms, it unexpected. It was rather swift. It was rather swift. Can yeah. you just run us through what, I guess what your overriding memories from that day are? Uh, well, I mean, I, I'd gone in that day and I had a, a a meeting booked with the new CEO because there was a new CEO that had arrived and she was the eighth CEO I've had in my career. So I was kind of used to them. Um, and I went up to have the meeting and I really didn't know, I mean, perhaps the rest of the industry did, but I didn't know that I was just about to be fired. But there was a human resources person in the room, so... Never a good sign. Never, never a good sign. So when I walked in, I understood, okay, there's change, there's no need to fight about it, there's no need to even talk about it. That's, yeah. It's been decided. So um, I was told to leave straight away. And of course... You know, I was just the, the first part of a big wave of what changes in the media and people losing their jobs, either being shown the door or being choosing to go yeah. to the door. And um, but I was the, in the firing line. I, I was the most public because yeah. I'm a female. Yeah. I was the editor of Vogue and I was at a fashion magazine. So the minute I walked out of the building, my phone started to go crazy, and it was like. It just didn't stop, you know. Yeah. And in fact, I didn't. I only answered it to the people that you know, to close friends and. Yeah told my family because it was a bit of a, you know, it all turns into a bit of a, um, they lampoon you kind of thing, yeah. it gets a bit stupid. Yeah, I mean, I guess the one thing is, I mean, 13 years editing Vogue is the most phenomenal career imaginable in a sense in this industry. Um, I guess, would you just have hoped that they had dealt with it differently on the day? Yeah, I think that it's, you know, they, they get caught up in the sort of drama, the high drama of it. and. And unfortunately, they get caught up in a, in a sense of misogyny, I think, where they make fun of fashion people who lose their jobs. They wouldn't do that to a man. Yeah. I mean, there were many male editors that have lost their jobs over the last um, period of time, the last few months. Yeah. They, they just don't do that. It was just um, something that they can they can ridicule. They think it's funny when it's attached to a woman. It's all that like devil wears proud and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And and I think that is sad because, the, you know, they. I think it's important to look at the sense of people's achievements and of yeah. their accomplishments and yeah. and of their history and of holding down. You may not be their biggest um, advocate, okay, yeah. but there's no need to belittle the hard work that people put in. And look, actually not even for me because whatever, I'm used to taking it on the chin, but they made fun of, they ridiculed my staff yeah. um, the next day in the papers. and because a lot of my staff also lost their jobs and that was completely unfair. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there was, a, I, there was one fantastic quote, if I may, from the book that you said about the press, which is that the press are clever and cynical. You can afford, you cannot outfox them and they're impossible to impress. Still very much your experience? Also, yeah. Or now with the book, has that changed at all? No, that's right. completely... <laughs> <laughs> so, no, woman, that's, fashion, no, still in that's, the firing that's a fact, line. That's just a fact, yeah. Dennis, that's not yeah. the opinion. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah no, that's just cool. a fact. And so, yeah, it's actually, you've got to get past the media and then you get to the people who really count, yeah. which at Vogue was always the readers. And now yeah. with my book, it's the readers as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. the media are no, ever, never going to be impressed. And, yeah. they've, you know, a lot of them have got quite a sneering tone towards fashion journalism. And, yeah, and they don't uh, realise that there's actually intelligence behind it and you have to know history and you have to know all these other things and they yeah. don't ever acknowledge that. No, they just think it's air kissing Fluffy. and champagne swilling and... Um, so okay, okay, fine. You know, yeah. it's a, we're not there to get the media's, yeah. um, you know, good, the good marks from the media. You're there for the reader. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. in the book that you, you said that when you took over as editor in 1999, that the magazine itself was at an all-time low circulation, advertising-wise, mm. and that it took you say three years for it to hit its stride. Is that a luxury that an editor can afford now? No, no. And yeah, I, I think you know I had to put together a whole new team, um, and. You know, and obviously it was my first editorship as such, and so there was there was trial and error, and we had, um, you know, we had to win all the, the client trust back and everything. And I think, yeah, I would say to you when I look back at it now, it took me three years for that. I'd say, yeah, that started to really, really come together. I mean, I fixed it up straight yeah. away, but for yeah. it to really have a a, a point of view solid and a base. solid base, I, I would have, I would say three. And I don't think you've got six months now. I don't think you've got three. Yeah. Um, because everybody else, you know, there's so much out there. You can start your own fashion magazine. You can. People just have, don't have that patience yeah. anymore. They don't have the patience to get to an article. They um, are so much more um, aware. They're so much more educated about. They do it yeah. themselves. So yeah. if you're not really giving them something that's yeah. incredible, they're not going to. They're not going to stay. Now, obviously, having been the editor of Vogue and worked there for so many years, you have seen and met a lot of celebrities in your time. I guess, firstly, was there anyone that exceeded expectations? Probably in the fashion arena, Karl Lagerfeld, because when he gets edited that yeah. issue of Vogue Australia, that was very early on before Karl started to really do yeah. lots of other projects. Like yeah. To get him was a fantastic coup, yeah. particularly for Australia. And he is just fascinating. I mean, he's a legend for so many reasons. And he's... Yeah so intelligent and the world that he inhabits, the culture, the, so many languages when you go to his homes, yeah. all that sort of stuff. I mean, he's amazing, extraordinary. And uh, I spent time travelling um, in China with Giorgio Armani and he's an, another yeah. one of those, you know, icons that just the cultural references that they have and the, and the world that they live in is it's just extraordinary. Yeah, I think the, the Karl Lagerfeld guest editing chapter was probably my favourite chapter in terms of a bird's eye view into oh, yes. another world, and just his sense of humour, I thought, came across yes. really well. Yeah, he's very funny, and mm. actually quite down to earth. And, and I love the whole Eva, <laughs> Eva as Nicole. <laughs> yes, our little Alvin. You'll have to read for you that have one. To, you do have to read that, <laughs> but there was a little trick behind the cover. <laughs> but he, yeah, he's kind of naughty, you know. Yeah, so, I like that. Yeah, he definitely exceeded expectations. But, you know, I met so many famous people, and it be, just became part of the job, and you have to. Yeah. That normally that you know you, you just got to talk to them about them and they never ask yeah. you anything back but you know it's, it's quite yeah. one-dimensional when you you're talking to celebrities and things but he um he was one of those people that actually inclusive. did talk to you he was very yeah. inclusive and um and funny and everything yeah. so i enjoyed him oh, yeah great now also for women who are juggling you know you have twin boys you're married with twin boys uh, juggling magazine career any advice for women on the old have it all Christian well, argument that keeps you, getting raised. Yes, it's, it's such a funny old co it's, conversation. I don't think you can have it all all yeah, at once. Yeah. You can you can have it all, and you're just going to have to maybe you know it's going to be consecutive or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I was really lucky to have a house husband, so, yeah. so I could do that big job and I could travel, and he was so great with the kids. Yeah. But you know you have to have inc incredible organisation and not yeah. beat yourself up too much yeah. if you didn't make dinner or. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you've got to be a little bit easy on yourself. Yeah. Um, but having said that, in the cor in corporate world, you really, you know, you have to be very driven and you've got to be there when they ask. And, you know, it's they kind of own you in a sense. They do, and it's not something you can take lightly. So, yeah. but, you know, maybe you don't, maybe a woman doesn't have to have every option if she doesn't yeah. want to. You don't have to tick every box. Yeah. What's the big pressure to tick every yeah. box? You've held one of the biggest jobs in the industry. You've now got a book out. What's next? I just want to mix it up a bit going forward and sort of, it's nice to be out of publishing for a minute, doesn't mean I won't go back in in some way, shape or form somehow. I love to write, yeah. but I'm just going to consult and write and keep my options open and maybe there'll be another book, I don't know, yeah. but um, just have a bit of fun. Excellent. Yes. Well deserved. <laughs> Why not? Thank you so much for thanks, your time Dennis, today. Thanks, Thank, thank you. you.